Mario himself. The seams on his clothing combined with the fine details of his shoes and hair make this the most realistically textured Mario we've ever seen. Otherwise, Mario retains extremely similar proportions to what we are used to, being a little chubster that is barely twice as tall as a toad. Speaking of toads, it looks like their usual harem pants have been altered to more closely resemble typical sweatpants, bagging up around their ankles to give them a more defined leg shape. They also have drawstrings out in front, completing the look. Also, toads have teeth. Ew. The red toad in the front of the poster even has a unique quality in the backpack strapped to his back. Though it is clearly meant to evoke the backpack from the Captain Toad games, it has been upgraded significantly with an assortment of camping equipment and buttons. It's worth noting that though he has the backpack, this toad is missing the uniform and headlamp that we usually see on Captain Toad. This leads me to suspect one of two possibilities. First, this toad could earn the title of Captain by the end of the movie in a Star Wars-esque medal ceremony, or this toad's character arc is about being different or separating himself from the many toads in the Mushroom Kingdom, and he'll begin to chart his own course as Captain Toad. And let's get one thing straight here, there are many toads, all presumably voiced by Keegan-Michael Key. In the foreground, we see a green toad strolling along, a blue toad in front of the antique store, a yellow toad holding a stack of coins, and a purple toad taking home a pet cheap cheap in a plastic bag. Wait, wait, wait a second, back to the yellow toad. He's looking over at Mario like he's surprised, isn't he? Well, given the way that Mario is looking out at the Mushroom Kingdom and how the red toad appears to be showing him in, it's not hard to believe that this could all be representative of Mario's first time in this world. The poster definitely points the viewer's eyes to the sprawling and bustling landscape, making me think it's not only our introduction to the Mushroom Kingdom, but also Mario's, who is positioned just as we are looking at the poster. Turning our attention to the smaller details and references. First, we can see a barrel full of pickaxes with a price tag that indicates they cost 8 coins each. Next, among the items in the antique store, we see a Super Mario World Gold Key, a music box from Super Mario Bros. 3, a P-Switch, a Super Bell, a Feather, a Boomerang Flower, and a Yoshi Egg. Speaking of Yoshi, we also see a fruit stand across the street filled with the exact kinds of fruits Yoshi would love to eat. But we still don't have any confirmation of Yoshi appearing in this film. But getting back to the poster, though it's cut off and hard to make out, this sign on the far left also reminds us of the Super Mario Brothers title screen. This sign indicates it's three coins for a tanuki suit and two coins for a mushroom. Next up in the sky, we've got a winged question block and clear across on one of the floating islands, we can clearly see a cannon that looks exactly like the one we constantly shot ourselves out of in Super Mario 64. Next, there's no mistaking that this is Princess Peach's castle, but if you look real close, you can make out the stained glass portrait of Peach in the window, again from Mario 64. Speaking of Peach's castle, it appears again on one of our Captain Toad's buttons, as does the symbol for Toast Arena and Fossil Falls. This sign features the same chest as the mystery boxes in Super Mario Bros. 3. This sign features the Cheap Cheap, a Super Mario Bros. 3 style Gelectro, a Mario World style Urchin, and a Spiny Cheap Cheap in that order. And here we have a couple of toads enjoying each other's company on a hedge, and over here we see a toad punching a question block with what looks like a coin popping out of the top, which is one way to stimulate the economy, I guess. There are tons of toads all around this poster hanging out or going into buildings like this one, which happen to look a lot like the multi-level toad houses that we've seen in Double Dash's Mushroom Bridge. But just as interesting as them are the elements of the world. Mushrooms look as round and wild as ever, with many of the taller ones resembling the mushroom trampolines of Mushroom Gorge in the Mario Kart series. Grass, mountains, bushes, shrubs, and trees also have far more detail than we have ever seen before, almost taking on a fuzzy Dr. Seuss-like look to them. But what would Mushroom Kingdom be without pipes? We can see green, red, blue, and yellow pipes interconnect, overlap, and climb all the way up the mountains in the poster. They're so present in eye-catching that I think they must play a significant role in the world of this Mushroom Kingdom. Perhaps as public transit, 
maybe you have to be a local to really understand exactly how to travel by pipe. Now, those stairs are a far less interesting way to travel. We do see a pretty typical set here beside a pink wall. Stairs are kind of an unusual thing to see so plainly in the Mario world, but their presence here is reminiscent of the stairs in Super Nintendo World. Speaking of, the Mushroom Kingdom in this poster appears to share a lot of similar design philosophy with the theme park. Large, rounded land masses and blocky primary colors that make things from far away still pretty easy to see. The last thing I want to point out is thanks to this bunch of pixels right here, some people were theorizing that this was actually Bowser hiding in the poster.